you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to this edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Hopefully you're all doing well on this Tuesday morning. This edition of Coffee with Graham is brought to you by Toby Hockey, Case Financial Group, Supplemental Insurance, Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, Evolve Green, and AETI. In today's episode, I'm going to be joined by Three guests, uh, two guests confirmed. I'm not sure what's going to be happening with one of the guests. Uh, he hasn't uh, responded to my uh, message on Instagram. That's how I've been communicating with him. But I'll give you guys an update on if that guest will be joining the show later on in today's episode after this first uh, interview that I did while well, this first segment of today's episode off the wall with Cody. But before that, I just want to let you guys know about the new media player that we are using here on ASTV. Uh, check this episode out on our website at www.amateursports.tv. We'd love to hear your guys' feedback on the new media player that we are testing out. Uh, tested it out last night on one of my other shows, the Prospect Show here on the network. So yeah, uh, let us know your feedback on this new media player. Uh, if you want to check it out, to check it out, you guys can go under the tab TV shows on our website at amateursports.tv. And with this new media player, you have the option to rewind live shows like this one. And there's some other cool features as well, uh, a few other features as well. But uh, talking about the first guest in today's episode, it's Tuesday, so that means it's time for another edition of Off the Wall with Cody with Cody Wall. On this week's edition of Cody Wall segment, Off the Wall with Cody, we're going to be talking about three games that happened on the network this past week slash weekend, starting off with last Wednesday's matchup in the Saskatchewan female U18 AAA Hockey League between the Notre Dame Hounds and the Swift Current Wildcats, as well as the two games that happened in Pilot Mound, Manitoba this past Friday and Saturday at Blackjack Stewart Arena between the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy Buffaloes U17 team as they took on the Indigenous Sports Academy Eagles on Friday night and Saturday afternoon. So, Without further ado, let's roll the intro of today's edition of Coffee with Graham and bring on Cody Wall here on Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. another Tuesday episode that means another edition of off the wall with Cody with Cody wall Cody uh you know didn't get to see you this past weekend as you did the Friday game I wasn't there uh, between the Buffaloes and the Eagles and then uh, I was there with Seth on Saturday doing that game while you were working at your uh job at the car dealership but you know uh we saw some fantastic action this past weekend uh you know even starting before that the swift current wildcats and notre dame hounds playing last wednesday we'll get into all those games in just a moment but it is late here on this monday night cody i've had a busy day uh, how's your day been so far yeah i've been a busy day uh like you said uh got up for for work today and uh Figured we'd do a little off the wall before going to bed. 
Yeah, and you know what? By the end of this, you might be going off the walls with just, uh, you know, depending on how late this one goes with it being about 10.23 p.m. at uh, night here on Monday. Yeah, I got to be up early. You got to be up early. So let's uh, get into breaking these downs uh, right off the bat. Let's get down to breaking down these games uh, right off the bat. Uh, talking about the Swift Current Wildcats and the Notre Dame Hounds, um, you know, talking about, you know, the Hounds winning that game three to one last Wednesday. They were up two to nothing after two. Uh, Swift got a goal and the Hounds got a goal in the third to make it a final three to one. But looking back at that game, uh, just that performance from the Hounds, uh, you know, going out and beating one of the top teams in the league in the Swift Current Wildcats. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they came out uh, firing in all cylinders, ma managing to uh, have three different goal scorers uh, for Notre Dame, out sh shooting uh, the Wildcats in that game. Uh, goal scorer Eva Filipova, Filipola for the Notre Dame uh, team w managed to pull out the win uh, in that one, battling Carly Leonard. Uh, Carly manages managed to stop 25 of her 28 shots on the the game. Uh, had a pretty game good game for herself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, you just look at this Notre Dame Hounds team. Uh, they limit the shots in this game, Cody, to 18 by Swift Current. Of course, Swift Current, a team that we know can put up offense and uh, and big bunches when they want to. But looking at Notre Dame, they uh, have only 10 goals against this season. Uh, definitely a good defensive team. You know, talk about, you know, what you thought the key was to their game on the defensive side of things and shutting down this high-powered Swift current uh, Wildcats uh, attack. Yeah, one thing, uh, you know, they only had two penalties called against them in the, the Hounds only allowing Swift Current to have the man advantage or woman advantage, uh, sorry, the one or the two times and uh, only letting the the Wildcats capitalize that one time, you know, uh, playing a good disciplined game uh, is often a, a good way to find yourself in the win column. Uh, luckily for Swift Current, you know, their penalty kill managed to uh, keep it within reason, uh, you know, uh, the Notre Dame power play did go 0 for 4 on the night. So, you know, their power play is something they'll probably be working on. But uh, one of the positives for Swift Current is uh, able to kill all four of those uh, penalties that they did have. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, we'll dive into uh, Swift Current in just a moment here. Uh, but I want to talk about Notre Dame some more here specifically. Just talking about that depth that they have in that scoring in that game. Three different goal scorers and Kaylin Gilroy, Keanu McKibben, and Spring Mosset. Um, You know, looking at it, this is a team that has had depth in the scoring uh, category. Uh, in that department all season long, just how huge that depth was against a very good Swift Current team. Yeah, when you can have, uh, like you said, depth uh, at the scoring position, uh, you can really run all your lines out there uh, and feel confident that, uh, you know, you're going to have somebody who can put the puck on net and uh, have a good quality chance uh, every time they do kind of get into the offensive zone when you do have that kind of that depth down uh, in the forwards. Yeah. And, you know, looking at it, uh, touching on Swift Current, like you said, one thing that they did very well positive for them was that penalty kill uh, 0 for 4. Uh, the Hounds were on the power play. You know, uh, Swift Current, definitely something that they're looking to continue to build on is just that success they've had on special teams, of course, getting a goal uh, on not as many opportunities as Notre Dame had on uh, Swift's own power play going one for two. Just talk about what impressed you the most, uh, more in depth about how Swift was operating at such a high level on the power play, as well as uh, killing off those four penalties uh, with good execution. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you can get to the man advantage, uh, it's right there in the word. You know, you get an advantage, you're able to cycle the puck and able to find open space. And often, uh, if you are struggling offensively, that's somewhere where uh, you can often get some momentum. And uh, it does look like they were able to get a, a goal on the their power play for the swift current in their 
one of their two uh, power plays that they did have. And then going to the penalty kill, uh, you know, keeping it a close game and uh, managing to kill off all those penalties, uh, those four that they did take uh, is definitely, uh, I'm sure the coaching staff is is appreciative that they were able to do that. But uh, often when you do take that many penalties uh, on most nights, the other team will be looking to make you pay a little bit more uh, than Notre Dame was able to, to make them pay in that game. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like it's just more credit to how well uh, Swift Current can kill off penalties. They've done it time and time again this year in uh, multiple circumstances when they've had a lot of uh, penalty trouble, that penalty kill really bailing them out. But, you know, uh, getting outshot in this game by quite a bit, 28 to 18 were the shots in favor of Notre Dame. Uh, what do you think that stem uh, came down to for uh, Swift Current? You know, do you think it was just not having enough puck possession? You know, maybe some turnovers, uh, you know, going into the other way of Notre Dame having puck possession. Talk about, you know, what uh, Swift lacked in that department of not generating as many shots as they would have liked to. Yeah, puck possession is always a, a key in a game. You know, uh, when, when you have the puck on your stick, you, you're definitely able to uh, you know, that's less time that your opponent has it and is able to uh, generate offense. So, you know, being able to possess the puck uh, on your stick and, and keeping it out of your opponent's hands uh, is always, you know, uh, a better uh, outcome because you're obviously playing with the puck. You're able to generate your own offense uh, opposed to when your opponent has the puck. Yeah, and Notre Dame has a very good defensive uh, team, right? They're a very good defensive team, only 10 goals against that season. Uh, Just looking at their record as well, like this is arguably the best team in the league right now at this point. Um, Looking at the standings, like you just look at this Notre Dame team, 8-0-1-1, only one loss, and that came in overtime. But do you feel like, you know, Swift, had some troubles against, you know, trying to get to the inside, trying to get shots uh, on this Notre Dame team because of just how sound defensively this team plays. Yeah, definitely when you play a good defensive game, you're able to suffocate your opponent. And, uh, uh, you know, that's something I think that Notre Dame does well is uh, apply that defensive pressure and uh, able to uh, eliminate their opponent's uh, chances. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we're going to end our talks from uh, that female game right here uh, between the Swift Current Wildcats and the Notre Dame Hounds, which happened last week on Wednesday night on ASTV Productions. We broadcasted that game. Uh, the record right now, uh, not sure what the teams did after those games, what their records were before, but Notre Dame right now is second place in the league, only one point back of the number one team uh, in the standings in Regina. The Hounds are 8-0-1-1, and Swift Current right behind them, two points back with the record of 7-4-2-0. Coming up after the break, Cody is going to break down this past weekend from the Pilot Mountain Buffalo's U-17 male prep program, uh, getting two wins against the Indigenous Sports Academy Eagles in two exhibition games that were played in uh, Pilot Mount, Manitoba at Blackjack Stewart Arena. You're watching Coffee with Graham, Off the Wall with Cody, with Cody Wall here on ASTV Productions. Stick around for more after the break. Welcome to Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment. Welcome back to this edition of Off the Wall with Cody on Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Off the Wall with Cody with Cody Wall. We, uh, well, Cody broke down the Swift Current Wildcats loss to the 
Uh, Notre Dame Hounds last Wednesday, last week uh, on Wednesday night, the game was on ASTV Productions. Uh, check it out wherever you guys watch our broadcast. If you guys missed that game, uh, was definitely an, an entertaining game for sure. A close one, three to one win for the Hounds in that one. But uh, Cody, you know, talking about two games, uh, one game that you did some play-by-play -play for. I did the play-by-play -play on the Saturday game, but Friday night and Saturday night, the Pellet Mount Hockey Academy Buffaloes uh, took on the Indigenous Sports Academy Eagles. Uh, the Buffaloes had good success, winning 4-3 to three in a shootout on Friday night, and then a uh, dominant 6-1 win on Saturday afternoon. But talk about that first game of the weekend on Friday night. The Buffaloes in that game, down 2 nothing early on, ties it up at 2 uh, in that second period, and then that third period was uh, both teams getting the goal. Of course, the Buffaloes tied it up with less than a minute to go in regulation of that game. Of course, nothing was decided in OT, so they had decided in a shootout, and uh, you know the Buffaloes coming away with that win. Talk about the fight that was shown by this Buffaloes team uh, this past Friday night. Yeah, they definitely came out uh, in that first period. It seemed like they came out a little flat-footed, I thought, on uh, that Friday uh, night game, but uh, they were able to, as the first period progressed, able to uh, kind of get the feet back under them. And then uh, once it did come to that second period, it did look like they were able to, uh, for spurts in that early second period, uh, able to generate some offense and able to get on the board. Uh, and then, like you said, uh, in that third period, just a, a back and forth affair, just, uh, you know, it was, Really an entertaining game. I don't know if you were able to watch it from home there, Graham, but uh, I know me and Seth, it, it was a real treat, the back and forth uh, between the two teams on Friday night. Yeah, and I actually did watch uh, almost the whole game after to try to get prepared to, you know, uh, get prepared for that Saturday broadcast that we did. But, yeah, like you said, the Buffalo is really – uh, came out flat in that first period and really weren't doing the things that they usually do well, very well in that first period. The uh, Eagles dominated that period, but like you said, uh, as the game went along, the Buffaloes got their feet under them and that four check looked a lot better. Their D zone looked really good as well. Uh, their coverage in the D zone throughout that whole game. Uh, Miles Gordon was really good as well but one thing that was uh really good from the eagles uh, i feel like you would agree with this was the penalty kill uh breakdown you know how they were able to neutralize the the buffalo's power play and really make them struggle to enter the zone at times on that friday night game yeah that's one thing i noticed uh was that eagles team was a very aggressive team and when it came to uh the penalty kill they were able to uh you know play aggressively and, and put pressure on the Buffalo to uh, kind of force plays, which is something we didn't always see from uh, the Buffalo power play. Uh, usually, you know, they are in control and able to generate offense pretty well every time they are on the power play. But, uh, you know, the Eagle penalty kill definitely did uh, a good job of, you know, keeping the pucks to the outside and eliminating some of, uh, the high danger scoring chances. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing that I feel was not in the Eagles favor was their D zone coverage, uh, you know, let up a lot of opportunities for the Buffaloes in front weren't clearing pucks away, uh, with much success at times in that game. And really the Buffaloes, uh, get into that net and saw it on that tying goal by Carlos Stilione to tie up the game. It was, a, it was a result of a defensive zone breakdown by the Eagles. Just talk about, you know, where the Eagles fell flat in that game, uh, talking about the D zone. Well, at times it felt like, uh, you know, they did uh, they did have a good penalty kill, but it did seem like they were, uh, you know, dependent on it a little too much at times. Uh, though Pilot Mound, uh, though they did have a good penalty kill, uh, the Eagles, uh, Pilot Mound did still seem to, at times, pick up a little bit of momentum from, uh, you know, generating on the cycle and and keeping the puck on their stick, able to, uh, you know, even though they were getting shots from the outside, able to, uh, you know, get a little bit of traffic in front of the net uh, and, and cause a little bit of uh, chaos in front of the goalie. 
Uh, one thing I, th I did also think that they uh, maybe pilot mound were, was lacking a little bit was some physicality. Uh, I know they were missing some of their uh, heavier hitting guys uh, from the lineup. Uh, another person I, that I thought uh, was a notable omission from the lineup was Keegan Leach. Uh, he was, you know, usually he's a guy who's able to uh, generate a lot of offense coming up the ice and able to make that good first pass. Yeah, and, you know, with so many players out like they had, Keegan Leach out, uh, Izzy Amy, who's such a physical presence out there, really draws the physicality for this team. Uh, you know, they had Jack Smith out as well, and uh, I forget who else. It might have been uh, another player. I think uh, it was Keen Hodgins was out as well. But talking about those three players up front, uh, those two players up front and Jack Smith and Izzy Amy being out and Keegan Leach being out on the back end, how this Buffalo's team was able to, you know, step up and players were able to, you know, fill into the lineup and produce for this team uh, in that Saturday game. Yeah, with uh, Keegan in, Leach in being that out. Friday game, sorry, in that Friday game. <laughs> with, uh, with Keegan Leach being out of that uh, Friday game, it definitely uh, let the other defensemen have uh, a little bit more time. And, and it, they did look good out there. Uh, you know, the other defensive pairs had to, you know, do a little bit more out there when, when uh, you know, you don't have a guy who's able to generate the, the breakout like Keegan, you know, you got to depend on other guys. So uh, they did have other guys who were able to step up, like um, Corey Nelson. He looked good. Uh, Bo Banderman, he was another guy who had looked real good. And uh, Braden Bear, he was making some good passes out there as well, as well as uh, Matt X Dirwanka. I uh, might as well mention all the the defensemen there, Real Chartrand, all the all the guys really uh, stepped up on the back end there, and then on uh, up front, uh, yeah, like I said, it looked like the the Buffalo were lacking a little bit of physicality. I do think that is because uh, Izzy Amy wasn't in the lineup. He is a guy who often is uh, a wrecking ball out there and is able to, uh, you know, I don't want to say. A, a, put too much pain on his opponents, but you know, he, he makes their life harder when they're going into the corner and they know a guy's uh, coming in full speed, uh, going to be laying the body on them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, talking about a strength for the Eagles was they were able to, to be physical in uh, that Friday game, uh, of course, the physical game on Saturday as well. But in that Friday night game, talk about what you like from the Eagles in terms of the physicality department. Yeah, the Eagles definitely, they didn't, uh, they never left uh, a player without getting hit. They they laid the body on almost every every player, every shift. They were always finishing their checks. Um, you know, they weren't always hard checks, but the Buffaloes knew that the Eagles were there. Uh, every time they had had the puck on their stick, they were, uh, you know, uh, an Eagles player was going to get in their way and, and was going to try and separate the, the man from the puck on uh, every occasion. Yeah. And, you know, uh, obviously, like in that game, it was a very back and forth game, like you said. And uh, the Buffaloes coming out with it, uh, a lot of physicality shown by the Eagles as well. A good pressure on the four check, get on the PK uh, with the pressure. Uh, made it difficult for the Buffaloes to break in. And, yeah, Buffaloes, once they got their feet moving, they, they really started getting more opportunities, getting more chances, uh, shots on net. But, you know, Buffaloes, wow, 6-1 uh, to one win on Saturday. Uh, really came out strong in that game, uh, even though they were down one to nothing. To start off the second period off of a, a penalty kill goal, uh, seven seconds in by Deegan Wallpass, uh, Stepping up into the play, picking off a cross ice pass attempt, uh, going top shelf. The Buffalo scoring six unanswered after, uh, from what you saw, what impressed you so much about how the Buffaloes responded after that and just how they played this whole game. Yeah, that first period looked like it was a very back and forth affair. Uh, I would maybe give the slight edge to the, the Buffalo in that first period on Saturday, uh, and then you know, early on in that second period, like you said, uh, you know, the Eagles caught 
the Buffalo a little flat footed on those first 10 seconds, but uh, going forward, you know, the, the Buffalo, uh, they kind of settled down. They took a, a moment and uh, they didn't let that early second period goal get to them. And they just kind of kept on pushing and uh, they just really laid on uh, the offense from there. And it came from everybody, uh, you, you know, uh, the first goal coming from uh, Joran Kusterman's uh, second goal, you know, it was Dmitry Petrenko's first goal as a Buffalo. So, you know, that's, uh, I'm sure that was a, a real uh, highlight for Dmitry, you know, with him being in, I believe it was his sixth game now with uh, the Buffalo uh, getting his first goal and he looked good. Uh, you know, even on s- Friday, you know, he had looked uh, progressively. He's been getting better uh, as the games have gone on. And uh, he's definitely somebody I know I've been noticing more and more as the games have gone on. Yeah, very uh, persistent on the four check. Uh, and a guy that seems like he tries to get under the opponent's skin as in many ways as possible with just that. Uh, persistent aggressive four check that he has out there but uh talking about you know uh the buffalo scoring six unanswered goals uh you know where those opportunities really came from uh from them on those two go- on those six goals in your opinion how they generated their offense yeah s- some of them uh l- were coming off of just you know uh, a rebound some of them uh like uh like the first goal by Joran Kusterman's and uh, the fifth goal by Sam Takahashi, you know, both those goals kind of came as, you know, snipe top corner. Uh, You know, they were both kind of right in that high uh, slot area right between the circles, uh, at the top of the circles. And uh, I know Joran, his was, uh, you know, a nice shot coming into uh, the zone as a, from a drop pass, and then uh, on Sam Takahashi's, his was uh, you know it was a re- or it was a sh- pass that came over to him, or sorry, it was a rebound that came out to him, and uh, he kind of positioned nice and just sniped it top corner. Uh, so it kind of was a variety of goals. They kind of came from uh, different, different, uh, all different ways. With uh, you know that power play goal by Laz Constant. Uh, that one coming off of a, a rebound by Bo Bannerman uh, from the point. So just, yeah, like I uh, kind of all uh, different, different kinds of goals coming for the Buffalo in that uh, Saturday afternoon game. Yeah, and uh, folks at home uh, only saw five goals scored. Of course, our internet went out with, I don't know, a minute or so left in the game. So you guys didn't see the sixth goal because of that. But, yeah, um, talking about the Eagles now. Uh, in that game, you know, it was a, an even uh, period in the first uh, just based off the score. It, the Eagles seemed like they were ha- hanging in there. And, uh, you know, that goal by Deegan Wall pass, uh, you know, off of that nice uh, shorthanded goal really seemed like it, it could have been uh, the Eagles starting to gain momentum. But, they uh, ran out of steam as this game went along, gave up a lot of shots. Uh, you know, talk about where the Eagles fell flat the most in that game on Saturday. Yeah, just to kind of bring it back, yeah, as uh, it was a pretty even period, like uh, we were kind of talking about, looking at the shots, uh, Pilot Mound registered 12, and the Eagles registering 9. So, you know, the only three shots uh, separating the two. What really was, uh, you know... Uh, a deciding factor, I would say, is that second period, uh, just because you know they really laid on uh, the pressure. The the Buffalo really laid on the pressure on the Eagles, and it kind of laid the groundwork to kind of continue on with that into the third. Uh, you know, they at the end of the second ha- registered 33 shots on Eagles goaltender uh, with the Eagles only registering five shots in that period, put, totaling them to 14 by the end of the second period. So, you know, you just look at that and, uh, you know, when you've doubled your the other team at the end of the second period, you know, uh, unless you're facing, uh, you know, a top-tier goalie, which, you know, not no disrespect to the 
goaltender for the Eagles, but when you're having that many uh, shots, you're going to expect to be laying down the offense. Yeah, and Keegan Danzaro, the goaltender for the Eagles in that game, faced like high shots, like shots in the high 40s, like that amount of shots. Like they, uh, it was a field day for the Buffaloes uh, at the end, near the end of that game, once that game ended, uh, just with the amount of shots that they had and how they outshot this Eagles team. But talking about the play of Keegan Danzaro, uh, Seth gave him player of the game, uh, and I would have to agree with that. Like, he was the only reason that they were, uh, you know, only giving up six goals. Uh, could have been a lot more if there was a different goaltender in there, perhaps, but uh, not to criticize Trey Kincaid at all. But Keegan Danzero, like, had a fantastic game, uh, even though he let up six goals, just the amount of shots he faced. Talk about, you know, his performance, what you like the most from Keegan's game in that uh, six to one loss for them on Saturday. Yeah, it just looked like he wasn't giving up. Uh, he did look like he was still trying to, you know, bring in each rebound, not uh, give it off too much of an angle. Uh, and, you know, it looked like he was still trying right to the end. Uh, but, yeah, when 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 you face that many shots, uh, you know it's going to be a hard day. And uh, he had a bit of a hard day, but, you know, all in all, I, I think he would be – very deserving of that player uh, of the game, just based on, you know, how his effort level not wavering as the game went on and really keeping his team as close as he could in that game. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one thing that uh, was difficult for the Eagles, I feel like put them in a bit of a hole as the game went along was just the amount of penalties they were taking. They were getting so frustrated out there. You could just see it by their body language and what was happening. But the Buffalo's power play uh, looking a lot better in this game. Uh, they got a lot more zone time, moved the puck around very well, and uh, even got some goals on the power play. You know, talk about the Buffalo's uh, man advantage in that game on uh, on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, the man advantage definitely looks like it was uh, going good. Uh, I know that third goal, uh, or that the, the yeah, sorry, the third goal, uh, the first one in the sec third period by. Laz Constant uh, came off of the five on three power play. Uh, I believe it was pretty much right after uh, the Eagles had taken that penalty, and it was off of a sh uh, a shot by Bo Bannerman from the point after uh, the face off was won, and then kind of Laz Constant just kind of uh, popped it in from the corner there off the rebound, and uh, was able to you know really continue on with that uh, that strong play on the power play uh, when the Buffaloes do get the man advantage. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the man advantage looking a lot better for the Buffaloes. They were able to, uh, you know, do a lot of good things that they weren't able to do on Friday night's uh, shootout win, 4-3 to three over the Eagles there. But uh, one more uh, question before I let you go here, Cody. Uh, a player from the Buffaloes and a player from the Eagles that impressed you the most from those two games this past weekend? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go a little off the board. Uh, somebody who I thought uh, looked really good was Emerson Sheward. Uh, you know, he's kind of been a guy who I thought maybe has – uh, at times in the prior games, uh, hasn't been as noticeable, but I thought uh, he kind of uh, was looking a lot better in these past two games, the Friday night one that I called, and then uh, watching the Saturday night broadcast, or Saturday afternoon broadcast. He was somebody who I thought uh, kind of behind the scenes has been taking uh, some leaps and bounds, and he was able to register two points in that uh, Saturday game. And then uh, what about for the, the Eagles on their side of things? Uh, a lot of players that, you know, showed they could step up uh, in that Friday night game. And, uh, you know, Keegan Danzero in that uh, Saturday game. But who impressed you the most from the Eagles in, that, in those two games this past weekend? In both games, uh, I would have to say probably Deegan Wapas. Uh, he was definitely moving his feet out there. He was uh, throwing the body and was able to register some points. So I would say for the Eagles, he was def uh, over the whole 
general weekend, he would be my uh, weekend player for the Eagles. Well, yeah, two players that were very impressive this past weekend. I uh, can't forget about a guy like Miles Gordon, who I forgot to you know, ask you about. A guy like Laz Ponson as well for the Buffaloes, but Emerson Sheward, uh, you know, a player that, like you said, uh, has been improving uh, game in and game out. Uh, and, yeah, Deacon Wapas looking very strong, very uh, impressive for the Eagles in those two games this past weekend. Uh, Cody Wall on Off the Wall with Cody here on uh, Coffee with Graham. Join me for another Tuesday edition of the show. Cody, uh, it is late now. You go get some sleep and get ready for work in the morning. Hey, we'll talk. Uh, I guess we'll see each other on the weekend here coming up. We'll uh, talk here on Off the Wall with Cody next week once again. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks, Graham. And Cody Wall joining his segment here on this Tuesday edition of Coffee with Graham, Off the Wall with Cody, uh, breaking down the past week slash weekend of games we saw here on the network. Coming up after this next commercial break, I'm going to be sitting down uh, interviewing a high school hockey player, Carter Ambrose, uh, number 13 of the College Belvo Barracuda's male hockey team. He's going to join the show to talk about his season so far, how the team is doing this season as they are in first place currently in the Winnipeg Free Press East Division, as well as talking about this year's roster and some other things as well. You're watching Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Stick around for more after this commercial break. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid-connected, off-grid, and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm? Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you, with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Of course, you guys just heard from our uh, one of our sponsors, an Evolve Green, sponsoring today's edition of the show. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, Cody Wall joined me on Off the Wall with Cody to break down the past weekend of games uh, slash week of games, uh, starting off with last Wednesday's matchup in the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League between the Notre Dame Hounds and Swift Current Wildcats. And then he also broke down the past weekend of games Friday night and Saturday night between the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy U-17 male prep Buffaloes and the Indigenous Sports Academy Eagles. The Buffaloes winning 4-3 to three in a shootout and 6-1 to one as well on Saturday. So uh, now we're going to get into talking about some high school puck, uh, talking to team captain of the College Belleville Barracudas, number 13, Carter Ambrose. Carter. Great to have you on the show, man. I see you're in your car. Are you uh, getting ready for class soon? Yeah, I just uh, I had a class. I'm in spare now, but, uh, you know, just uh, excited to be on the show. 
Yeah, great to have you on, man. I, I know that uh, we were going to do it yesterday, but, uh, you know, yeah. today worked a bit better. But, yeah, great to have you on the show nonetheless. Uh, you know, starting off with this, uh, a lot of success so far for the team this season. 10-2, and two, first place in the Winnipeg Free Press East Division, uh, 67 goals for for the team, uh, 26 against, which is second least. Uh, just talk about, you know, how nice it is to be back, having so much success right where you guys picked up uh last time picking off right where you left off from that championship run back in 2019 2020 yeah you know it's it's awesome there was there was a year we where we didn't have hockey and it just it it sucked and now being back with all the guys playing high school again you know it's it's awesome i'm just so happy to be back in the rink with everybody and just you know the team yeah, and, you know, it's been a while, you know, before this year since you guys got to play, of course, having last season canceled due to COVID-19. But take me back to that championship, uh, your first year with the Kudas, just that experience of, you know, in your first year winning a championship with this team. Yeah, it it was it was unreal. Like, can't, can't even fathom how we did it, but it, it was an experience of a lifetime. We're hoping to do it again this year. We're... We're doing pretty good this year, so it's looking like we have a, a good shot at uh, doing it again. But, you know, that that was just such a great experience. It'll stick with me for the rest of my life. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, uh, being part of a team that uh, got their first championship for the school and uh, the program's yeah. history, you know, uh, talking about, you know, the year before you were playing for Churchill, uh, yeah. Just talk about, you know, why uh, you made that switch over to play for the Kudas after playing for Churchill in that first year. Well, um, it's just with all the other leagues like AAA and AA, it's it's a lot of commitment with like school and everything on the side, too. It's just seven days a week after I, I like high school because I can have a I can have a life and do hockey all at the same time and have time for other sports like I'm hopefully going to be playing on the basketball team this year too. And so with the, those other teams that I could have went and tried out for, it's just too much. I I just like the schedule that high school hockey has. Yeah, gives uh, players a lot of, uh, you know, room to, you know, have a lot of free time in the evenings, free on the weekends. And like you said, I have an opportunity to play other sports like maybe basketball or maybe another sport as well uh, on the side. But, you know, you get named ca- – in captain this season on the team uh you know how huge was that for you just getting that honor of getting to wear the seat representing your school that way you know it's great i i love being able to lead these other guys and i was in their shoes in grade 10 at one point too so and like i i guess i never played in grade 11 but like these other guys i just yeah. it's good to be able to lead them because i have experience in high school i've played in grade 9 grade 10 grade 11 didn't have the year too but it's 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 great. I've always been the younger guy looking up, and now I'm the older guy, you know, helping out the guys down below, and it's just been a great experience. You know, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of change since the last time that this team got to play back in 2019, 2020, in terms of, you know, how the roster changed, but there's still that players, those players with championship experience, of course, yourself, uh, the Dillerone brothers and many others uh, talking about, you know, even though there's not as much championship experience as there would have been last season, but still having that championship experience, how huge you feel that's going to benefit you guys down the line this season. Uh, honestly, I think we're at a huge advantage because our boys, we've, we've done it before. We've felt that victory and the boys are just hungry to go and, uh, Go and get that again. Talk about the rookies coming into this team, the the new additions to this year's squad. You know how they fit into the Kudas culture so far. Uh, most of the guys have been fine. We we tend to go out for like wings a lot, and the guys have just been we've stuck like glue. Like this year, our team is super close. We're we're all tight. It's like we're just a big family. What's the main place to go for our wings for the team? Smitty's. Smitty's. Go there all the time. Of course. Of after course. A big dub. Yeah. Go on wing night, I'm assuming, where you get those good deals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Between Tuesday and Thursday. Right on. Is there a <laughs> favorite wing type for you, or do you mix it up from time to time? You know, the usual order is uh, 24 honey garlic. 
Oh, that's pretty solid. 24 of, uh, you know, your favorite wing. Gotta love yep. that. Gotta love that for sure. Uh, you know, gotta also love how you're playing this season. Uh, six goals, 20 assists, uh, 26 points in 12 games. You actually lead every single player in every single division in points so far. Just talk about, you know, how proud you are so far of the, the type of production you've been able to put up, especially being a defenseman. Yeah, it's it's been great. Honestly, uh, I don't know how I've been doing it. I've been I've had a lot of help from my team. Definitely couldn't do it without these boys. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just go out there and I play my game. Right on, right on. And you know, obviously, you put up the points, but you're also a defenseman. Uh, talk about your game in the defensive zone this season. You know how you feel that it's taken its next step this year. Uh, um. I would say that – so the last time I played high school, I was around like 5'8", like 100 and something pounds. And uh, those two years in between the last season that I played and this season, I've grown quite a bit. I'm now like 6'1", around 190. And so it's – having more mass and like the speed and everything, it's a lot, help, a lot of help in the D zone, especially when I need to like rub a guy out in the boards and stuff. So that's, that's another advantage. Does that also come down to just uh, the work you put in during the COVID season last year? Did you have a chance to go in the gym as well as uh, the work you put in the off season? Yeah, actually, um, there was a guy on my team that he was always a big guy uh, for the gym. And I was never big into the gym. I would just like have always just been athletic and stayed in shape by playing sports and stuff. But right. my other friend, he started going to the gym and he started getting me into it. And uh, he brought me to the gym a couple of times and I fell in love with it. And so... I got a membership at Snap Fitness, and then I had a membership at Sweat Equity, and now I want to I wanna go and get a membership at Altea. And uh, those hours in the gym definitely paid off. Yeah, for sure. Uh, give us a name of who that friend is. Uh, that's my uh, assistant captain, Miles Hamilton, and my D partner. Right on. Just, yeah, obviously, like, seems like you guys are, you know, close, obviously, going to the gym together. Uh, him, you know, influencing you to get in the gym. Talk about, you know. Yeah how you guys are able to, you know, have so much chemistry out there as a, as a decor, as a, a pairing out there on the team this season. Yeah. Well, me and my D partner, we've, we've played hockey uh, together since we were little kids. I've known him for like a long time. And it's just when we're, when we're out there, it feels like we connect whenever I am l- looking to send a pass across. I can, I know where he is immediately. He knows where I am immediately. And we're good at communicating out there on the ice, you know? Yeah, for sure. Just so great to have that when you're able to be in sync and have that communication on the ice, knowing yeah. where you are, which is so uh, great to hear. Uh, you know, talking about it some more, the 10-2 and two record, 67 goals for so far for the team, uh, 26 goals against. Just talk about, you know, how this team has been able to have so much success in the offensive side of things uh, first off before we get into the defensive side of things. Well, um. I would say a lot of our success offensively comes from not even it's not our we have the ability to score at any time it's just our ability to actually get out there and play our game because there's some games where we come out there and we're just not on our game and we like our first game against Kildone and East we just didn't come out there strong enough didn't put up enough goals and it's really it's really up to us to just come mentally prepared yeah. And, you know, obviously mental preparation is such a huge part of, um, you know, getting ready to play any sport, especially hockey. Um, but yeah, obviously knowing that you guys can score at any time, you know, having a lot of weapons out there on the offensive side of things and also getting some uh, offense from the defensive side of things as well. But talk about that defense, you know, how this uh, defensive zone play for the Kudas has been this season. You know, we are, our D guys have, I would say the best footwork in the league. We we can move our feet really well, and when we get the puck, um, I'm not too sure. Like, sorry, could you say the question again? Yeah, just the just how this team has been able to you know execute like you guys have been able to so far in the D zone this year. Just not only for the defense, like the defensive players, but just as a whole unit as well. Well. 
we practice our systems every day. And so it's just when we get the puck and we're going to break out of our zone and play defensively, it's just, it's just second nature at this point. It's, you don't, we don't even need to think about it. We're running these drills every day. Yeah. And, you know, obviously uh, Ethan Vincent is, uh, you know, in his second year with the team, uh, you know, he missed a year, but uh, he's in grade 11 this year. Uh, you guys got another young goaltender as well in the mm-hmm. lineup this season. Talk about, you know, how impressed you've been just with Ethan's play as well as the, the other goaltender on the team. Yeah, both of our goaltenders have been standing on their heads. Like you said, how many goals do we have against? 26 against. 26 goals against I think that's pretty impressive and uh yeah like for our other goalie our backup Seth Hasker as a as a rookie to come in and have two shutouts within the first 12 games of the season is pretty unreal not really heard of by many grade 10 goalies out there and Vincent he he, you just you know what you're getting from him He, he goes out there and he's he just stands on his head every game you know, talking about offense uh, from you, you know, in that last game that you guys had a big win over Dakota, you ended up scoring a hat trick, got the uh, the coup de cap, I'm pretty sure. That, that's, yeah. what the, that's what the award is called. Yeah, I was just uh, remembering off the top of my head. But just talk about, you know, what it was like for you to go out and score a hat trick, how that was able to happen for you against Dakota in your team's last matchup. You know, it's it can, it can happen any game, but I just – I came out hot and – had a good couple of rushes, had had the help of my teammates on those rushes, though. I couldn't do it all myself. But, uh, yeah, it was it was great. And that was the first time ever receiving the CUDA cap, too, in all of my years. So it was it was great. Yeah, pretty special, of course, receiving it in uh, your final year playing uh, high school hockey for this team. And, yeah, what a better way to, you know, uh, end off that game with getting the coup de cap after the game ended. But, you know, uh, talking about it, th- this team has uh, dominated at parts in the season, but there's also been some close games. Talk about, you know, how huge it's been for you guys to have some close games and be able to come out with a W in those games so far this year. Uh, honestly, I would just – I just think it's – it's really just up to us. Like, any of these games we – I know that we have the skill to compete in them. It's just a matter of showing up and getting out there, getting our legs moving. Yeah. Just playing as a team. For sure. Having that uh, preparation before getting ready to go and just uh, executing that game plan, like, uh, you know, the coaches draw it up. Uh, Talk about this coaching staff, you know, how huge they've been, uh, you know, for you guys' success this season, you know, putting together the line combinations, playing you guys in the situations that fit best for this team so far. Yeah, our coaching staff has been solid throughout all the years, and they've always they've always helped out and had really good systems. And this year, we actually have a really good addition to the team. The uh, we have a new D coach. His name is Scott Keller, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he played at Minnesota Duluth before, and he has a lot of experience in high level hockey. And so him, him joining our program definitely helped out quite a bit. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And last time I, uh, talked to a member from your team, uh, from the coaching staff, uh, Miguel Mark, who he talked about Scott and yeah, just huge for you guys to be able to have a chance to learn from a player that, uh, well, a former player, now a coach that, uh, you know, played at a very high level of university hockey for you specifically, you know, how has Scott helped in your game and, you know, just the, the things that he's told you this season. You know, every practice he pulls me aside and he's giving me pointers and it's really helpful. He, uh, he, he's really helping me, uh, helping show me like what I need to do to get to the next level, because obviously this, after this, I don't really want to just go to beer league. So he's going to, he's going to help me help push me to that next level. Yeah. And beer league is fun. It's a fun <laughs> uh, level of hockey to play at, but if you definitely can continue uh, to play at the highest level that you can definitely do it. And you've definitely uh, shown the skill, not only this year, but throughout your whole uh, high school career. Uh, last question before I let you go here, uh, Carter, you know, talking about uh, the upcoming games for the team. I'm not sure when you guys play next, but what's going to be the, the mindset heading into this next one, looking to continue this uh, good season that you guys have had so far, get another one in the W column. 
Yeah, we just need to keep the keep our foot on the gas. We got a game against uh, Windsor Park tomorrow. That should be a good one. And, uh, you know, we just need to finish this uh, last half of the season like we started it. I guess I'll ask you this one. Uh, you know, Windsor Park being back in the high school hockey league, obviously you guys are pretty much neighbors. Like, it's yeah. like a walk away. Uh, is the rivalry – you know, do people make it a bigger thing than it is, or is there a, a rivalry there that you guys see being a heated rivalry as the season goes along? I wouldn't say it's like a heated rivalry, but there definitely is a rivalry there. We, Most of the guys on our team know everybody on their team, and their team knows everybody on our team. Most of us are friends. When I'm skating down the ice with the puck, I've got the biggest smile on my face, like skating with all my friends. Haven't been on the ice with any of those guys in a while, and it's just it's good to be – it's good to be out there with them. And I, I guess I'll ask you this one as well, because obviously like fans, such a huge part of the game, uh, you know, you guys didn't play last year, but if you did play, there wouldn't have been many fans in the stands, maybe none at all. Just how yeah. nice is it to be back in your senior season uh, playing in front of these fans at home in the, the CUDA, in the, in the CUDA tank. In the CUDA tank. It it's, it's awesome. Like, when I did, I did get a season. So I got to play five games last season with Central Plains, and we didn't have any spectators. And it's just not the same playing a game like that. I just love it when when there's like a big hit or a big play, and like the fans going nuts. It's just the feeling inside the arena is just uncomparable. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I'm a Bellevue grad. I've been I've been to many uh, Bellevue high school hockey games in the past, and yeah, those those fans are crazy. They're nuts. Yeah. Uh, maybe the best fans in the whole uh, high school hockey league and uh, the Winnipeg high school hockey league. But Carter, yeah. uh, thanks for joining me here. You know, uh, you enjoy the rest of your spirit. Best of luck to you and the team the rest of the season, uh, and best of luck to you and the team in the upcoming game against Windsor Park. All right. Thank you for having me on. See you later. See you, man. And Carter Ambrose, team captain of the Belleville Barracudas, joined me on this edition of Coffee with Graham. And Carter, you know, lighting it up this season, as mentioned, uh, 26 points in 12 games played. And it's not that he's even a forward. He's a defenseman as well. Uh, you know, definitely a player that the Cudas are going to rely on in uh, many, many situations this season uh, as the season goes along, as they continue to play and search for their uh, second championship, trying to go back to back, I guess, because uh, with last year, no one was crowned champion in any division uh, due to COVID-19 canceling the season. But the last time this Cudas team uh, played this program played they won the championship back in 2019 2020 as you guys uh, probably all know as it's been well documented here on coffee with Graham of course when we did the series championship rewind but yeah best of luck to Carter and the rest of the Kudas in their upcoming game against Windsor Park and like I said to him best of luck to them uh, as the season goes along uh, in the rest of the season. So we're going to take uh, another commercial break here in this edition of Coffee with Graham, uh, on this edition of Coffee with Graham. Coming up after the commercial break, we're going to talk some female hockey with a head coach in the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League. Robin Ulrich, head coach of the Saskatoon Stars, joins the show to talk about this team's season this year, the roster, the results so far, the upcoming game they have against the Swift Current Wildcats coming up. Uh, the Stars being at home for that one on Saturday afternoon. And uh, to start things off in that interview, in this interview coming up with Robin, uh, I'm going to be asking her also about her time uh, having the opportunity to coach at the Western Regional Women's U18 Championship in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba at the start of November when she was a coach on the coaching staff for Team Saskatchewan, where that team brought home bronze at the Western Regionals. So you're watching Coffee with Graham. Stick around for Robin Ulrich's interview after this commercial break. And yeah, uh, enjoy more Coffee with Graham after this commercial.
He now is head coach of the Saskatoon Stars in the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League. It's Robin Ulrich. Uh, Robin, thanks so much for taking the time and joining the show here on this um, Monday. Of course, this being a pre-recorded segment in this Tuesday edition of Coffee with Graham. Uh, how are you doing since the last time that we talked in the summer? Uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me on again. And uh yeah, things are going well. Um, just came off kind of a busy stretch for for our team for November and for myself. But uh, yeah, so far everything's been been going well since we last chatted. Talk about that busy stretch in November. You guys played a total of eight games uh, compared to the five games you played in October in the regular season. Just talk about you know how November went. Uh, of course, you guys had three wins and five losses in that month. Yeah, um, I think November was uh, was a challenging month, but uh, we knew it was coming, um, and and I think it was a good good month for us in terms of learning a few things about our team and about our group, um, and the type of team that we want to be. Um, we had that break, kind of a, a couple week break in while uh, U eighteen nationals was supposed to be going on, which ended up being Western, so uh, that turned into a little bit of a, a jam packed schedule at the end of the month with eight games in three weeks, but. Um, I thought our team did really well coming through it. Uh, and like I said, we've seen some really, really positive things. Uh, had four games against uh, a couple of the top teams in in the league. Uh, and I think a good measuring stick for us uh, moving along as a young program. Let's dive into the Western Regional Women's U18 Championships that were, of course, played at the start of November in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. You were a coach on the team, an assistant coach, uh, getting to coach on that coaching staff. Uh, the team ended up winning bronze over Team Manitoba, and that was the only win for the team in the tournament. But, uh, yeah, talk about, you know, that experience for you coaching and just what it was like uh, coaching not only the best U18 females from across Saskatchewan, but uh, – as well as, you know, coaching against the best female U18 hockey players from places like Manitoba, Alberta, and BC as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was a really fun experience. Like you said, we won bronze, so um, the only win of the week, but we won the one that mattered, so ended up coming home with a medal. Um, I thought we maybe deserved uh, a better fate in a couple games. I thought we played really well. Uh, just had a, a couple bounces that didn't go your way, and when you're playing uh, at that level with such – such good players and such tight competition sometimes um it's it's hard to win it's hard to win and and if you don't get a bounce or two go your way that's the obviously the difference in a game so uh a really great experience good experience for me uh on the bench it was nice to take a little bit of a step back to my previous coaching days and head back on the defensive end and just focus on uh working with that group there and i had a, a really fun time working with you know specifically with those six and then getting a chance to coach with uh Obviously, Corey's my assistant coach in Saskatoon, but um, nice to get a chance to coach with Nolan Horback, who uh, he works with the U of S Huskies and somebody that I know and I've done a little bit with um, with him, with his program. Uh, but it was nice to to get a chance to actually step onto the bench with him and, and take some learning lessons from him as well. So um, overall, a really fun experience. And I think uh, a really good experience uh, as well for our, our young players, the O5s, that were part of that team uh, building up into a Canada Games year next season. Now, uh, there were players from many different teams in Saskatchewan that were playing for this team in this tournament. I'm pretty sure you guys had two players there from your team as well. I, I didn't get the names of those players, but talk about what it was like coaching those players and seeing the improvement they made throughout the week. There. Yeah, we actually had four um, there. So we had uh, Kira Buziak, Megan Hirschfeld, uh, on the front end and Jocelyn Fiala and Marissa McLaughlin on the back end. Um, so uh, a neat experience, a good chance to, to obviously work with them at the, at the next level um, and the next level of competition. And I think it was really fun to see them uh, play in some different roles in terms of where they were in the lineup um, and getting that chance to, to work at the next level. And like I said to a few of them, a few of the things that I've been, you know, maybe harping you on or we've been working about within our league, it's about getting you ready to work, play at that next step. And there's a few that said, oh, yeah, so when you talk to me about this, I get it now. Um, so that's always fun as a coach when <laughs> when a player comes back and says they can, you know, kind of understand where you're coming from. But um, it was really fun to, uh, to get to be with those four that week and to watch them really excel um, at that with the provincial team and and play the different roles that they did and i was really proud of how they handled themselves both on the ice and off the ice i think they they were excellent 
Now, diving back into uh, the Stars, uh, the team right now, 6-6-1, six, six and one, uh, currently on a two-game losing streak, 34 goals, four in the league so far, uh, fourth most in the league, and then tied third least in terms of goals against with 29. But talking about the team uh, starting right from training camp, you know, the group of players you had coming into this season to, to build this year's Saskatoon Stars team. Yeah, yeah. Um... Kind of a, a obviously a group, different group that hasn't maybe played together as much, but uh, one that we're pretty excited about um, having a group of uh, six returners in terms of grade twelves, and then adding a, a seventh with Kendall Gunther coming back in from uh, the Midget Double A League. Um, I think we've got a really strong group of leadership leadership group um, there, and a, a lot of people that they do things the right way. Um, and they're really hard workers and they set the tone for our group. Um, and then kind of having a bit of a smaller grade 11 class and then having a big uh, 806 is coming in as first year players. Um, and I think the most exciting thing about this is uh, just the way that they have gelled together as a group. Um, I have never quite experienced um, or seen a team just, they really get along really well. They enjoy coming to the rink. They enjoy being together. Um, and sometimes I don't know if they understand how special that dynamic is. Um, but they, uh, they make it fun. They make it fun. They come, they're willing to work hard. Uh, they buy in and it makes it fun for me as a coach. Um, when you have a group like that, that's really, really set, really determined. Um, and they take everything that you throw at them. Um, so it's been fun. Uh, we had a really good success our first weekend at the Calgary showcase, maybe did a little bit better than, um, even we were anticipating finishing first in our pool, but that was a nice test for them. Uh, early on, especially just uh, get, getting a chance to play after having almost a year and a half off uh, was really nice. And then um, first half of the season has been been really good. And like I said, you know, we've maybe been on a bit of a skid the last the last couple of weeks, but uh, those are always opportunities to learn and opportunities to um, learn both about yourself as a player um, and about us as a group. And I think uh, we're going to be stronger for it. And like we talk, it's important for us. We're looking to peak in March. So some little bumps the way don't hurt us um, as long as we're ready to roll once playoffs roll around in March. That's really where we're we're growing towards. Yeah, and March will most likely be here before we know it. But uh, nice yeah. to get the bumps out of the way early on, uh, you know, not so much uh, towards, you know, closer to playoff time. It's, that's when, you know, I think you'd agree and I think you allude to this, that that's when you want to peak as a team, right, when playoffs are yeah. coming up. But uh, talking about the rookies this year, uh, there's been some notable rookies. Uh, Avery Bayros, uh, 10 points second on the team in points. Sage Babby, uh, nine points third on the team in points. Uh, Riel Manish uh, leading defense and goals on the team with two. And then goaltender Michaela uh, Christman, uh, four and two record, a 924 save percentage and a 1.68 goals against average so far. Uh, just talking about those rookies as well as the other rookies, how they have, you know, bought into what this team is preaching, the culture of the Stars team this season. Yeah, I mean, I think the really fun thing about this group is uh, they're all dialed in on hockey their hockey all the time. Um, and that's something that's really special. They they work really hard. They, they're a group that's really ready to excel at the AAA level and they do well because, um, because they're ready to put in the work and they put in the extras away from the rink as well. Um, so it's been really fun to watch them uh, kind of grow into and figure out how to play uh, at the AAA level and find their way uh, within the league. And I think um, all of them are gonna play important roles within our program being successful both this year and going forward. So, um, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, you know, contributing uh, both on the score sheet, but I think there's um, also big contributions that are made by other players, such as uh, Grace Miller. I thought this past weekend in Regina really had a breakout weekend, had a really strong showing and her, her best one yet. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun and it, it's fun for the future and it's fun to, to see what's, what's coming up and what we can grow with that group. Yeah, and not only uh, these rookies up front contributing, but uh, just the whole forward group so far. Uh, nine out of 12 forwards have potted at least a goal this year. Uh, just talk about how happy you've seen uh, this team's depth come through this season in terms of, you know, not only one player scoring out there, but you got a whole bunch of players scoring out there as well. Yeah, and I think um, we spent a, line talk, a lot of time talking about uh, our success as a team comes from all 20 people pulling the rope and all 20 people contributing. We're not a team that's built around 
uh, one line that's going to do all of our scoring. We get, you know, contributions from across the lineup, like you said, nine out of 12 with goals and um, a few coming from the back end or a few, you know, good shots from D from the back end that are tipped in by the forwards. So um, we're really, uh, we, we're really a team that's focused around um, it's, it's team first and it's, it's win by committee. It's not, um, like I said, it's not one or two people that are going to be the difference in whether we're successful or not. It's really about all of us being a piece of the puzzle um, and everybody playing their role and, and doing their part to help us be successful. So I forget, how do you pronounce, is it Kira? Is that how you pronounce her first name? Yeah, Kira. Yeah. Uh, Kira Buziak uh, leading this team in points so far with 14 and an assist as well with nine mm -hmm. and 13 games played. Uh, talking about her specifically as that player that, you know, even though you guys got depth, it has really driven the offense so far and has been able to set up her uh, teammates so far this season leading to goals so far. Yeah, um, Kira is a special player in terms of her her offensive talent. Um, and I think she's one that's still maybe just kind of scratching the surface of what what she's able to do. Um, she's trying to figure out how to make make her game and her strengths work uh, within a league that's a lot tighter checking. Um, and that's, you know, a lot more physical than maybe she's been 100% used to. Um, so I think, uh, I think there's still a lot of ways for her to go, but I think uh, she's found a good start and um, she's successful when she's moving her feet and distributing the puck. Um, and again, it's, it's something where that's built around uh, not just one individual player doing the work, but others uh, being able to to be a piece of that. And, you know, all of our offensive attack is built around five people uh, on that attack and not just one person, you know, taking it end to end and, and burying. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you got three defensemen that have scored so far this year on the team. But uh, talking about the, the team in the defensive zone, just this D core specifically, uh, 29 goals against tied third least in the league. Obviously, it comes from a lot of team success. But this D core specifically, uh, what's impressed you the most out of them so far this year? Yeah, I think um, we've got a good mix within our D core, three grade 12s, um, all that are, are really good, uh, you know, physical um, keep their, they're, they're having their most success when they keep their game simple um, and they take care of our end. And I think um, we've been mixing around with the D pairs a little bit lately, just trying to find that right, that right combination that makes us the strongest. But um, yeah, they, they've really tried to, tried to buy in. And I think when we saw some real glimpses of it this past weekend, when we're, we're good in our defensive zone, we're hard to play against. We can make things uh, miserable for some other teams. So, uh, yeah, I've got those three grade 12s, and then we have Jocelyn Fiala as grade 11, who's, you know, dynamic skater, and then two oh sixes in Brielle Manish and, and Madison Buziak, who um, not a play, they're not the biggest of stature, but they're not afraid to play physical, and they're not afraid to jump in the rush. So, um, and I think it's not just, it's not just the D in the, in the defensive zone, but it's just, again, it's a five person unit within the D zone and, you know, contributions coming in from our centers doing a good job of being support and our wingers taking care of their job. So, and then also getting good goaltending. So, you know, it's the D cores have done, done pretty well, but I think it's a, a concerted effort across the board. And then part of that too, is I think our PK uh, for the most part has been really good. Um, and that's one thing that we really focus on and we try to, um, we take pride in, doing very well in that area of the game. Um, and there's some people that, you know, play really important roles in that. And that, that as well, um, in such a specialty teams driven, driven league, uh, having a really strong PK leads to success. So, um, yeah, I think there's, again, um, it's not just one or two people that are really driving success in that area. I think it's a, it's a full concerted effort of all, all of our 20 players to do that. Yeah, and we'll get into the, the goaltending in just a moment for you guys. But on the other end of the special teams, the, the power play, how have you felt that this team has been able to go out there on the man advantage so far, or the girl advantage, and execute so far out there when you guys have had chances there? Yeah, I think uh, anybody that's watched our games in the last little bit, it's no secret that it's maybe not clicking at where we would like it to be. Um, it's an area that we're, we're trying to put work into and trying to find the right – right mix and combination and right people for right spots. But I also think we've seen some real positives and maybe some goals haven't gone in, but we've, you know, had some good looks and put some good um, strings of passes together. So I think it's one of those things that's only a matter of time when it's going to start clicking. Uh, we find that right mix and, and things will go and then it'll probably be a little bit more successful for us. And I think that'll lead to some more success in games. Uh, you look at a few of our 
previous games, we would have potted an extra, you know, a power play goal here or there. That's a difference in a win or a loss. So um, just something we continue to work on and try and try and improve, like I said, with that specialty teams driven league, the better you can be in those two areas of the game, um, just the, the better chance you have of, of being successful in winning. Yeah, and for sure, uh, no doubt, special teams uh, a huge part in any uh, aspect of the game, whether it be PK or power play. Uh, you know, definitely, you guys looking to get it going soon on the girl advantage. Yeah. But uh, you know, looking at the goaltending, uh, rookie Michaela Christman has been absolutely outstanding, absolutely outstanding so far. I mentioned her stats earlier: four and two, uh, nine twenty-four save percentage, and a one sixty-eight goals against average. And then you got a veteran like award back there as well but you know talking about how impressed you've been with not only Michaela but uh Tora so far this season yeah and I mean Tora realistically in terms of last year only having a handful of games Tora is basically a rookie as well so um I think having um that being said I think she took a ton of strides last year over um over the COVID season and and made a lot of improvements that she's been able to bring in uh this season but uh you know, we've been really happy with our goaltending tandem so far. Um, it's it's fun to watch them just continuously get better each game and become more confident. And I think part of that is um, the both of their dedication to to their craft and trying to get better. And then um, having an excellent goalie coach in Ashley Keekley who um, really works with them independently on the little pieces of their game that they need improvement with. Um, and they they eat that up and they they take um, they take that and they they run with it and they do their best to to make those improvements. So um, so far to have two young goalies with you know not much experience in this league being able to put up numbers like that and keep us in games and give us a chance to win every single night um, couldn't ask any more of them. Yeah, for sure, and uh, just so impressive the numbers Michaela has put up. Of course, Tor, like you mm -hmm. said, taking huge strides last strides last year, even though it was a sh very short uh, COVID season. Uh, nice to see that the goaltending has been uh, good for you guys so far this year. Uh, you know, one last question before I let you go here, Robin. Uh, the upcoming game on Saturday at 2 p.m. at home against the Swift Current Wildcats. Uh, you guys have faced them twice so far this year, zero and two against them. Uh, only two goals for against them in those two games and six goals against uh what's going to be the uh mindset that the game plan heading in to this game at home against swift current this upcoming weekend on saturday yeah and i think um we had a you know we had a couple rough ones against them a couple weekends ago and um we didn't generate a ton of offense towards the net we didn't generate a ton of shots or shot attempts and when we did have some we we missed the net so uh the last couple of weeks, we've been putting a lot more focus on on our offensive piece of the game, getting pucks to the net, getting bodies to the net. Um, and as cliche as that sounds, when you have a, a team that plays some pretty good D like Swift does and has has good goaltending, uh, that's crucial. Being able to get pucks to the net, get some net presence, um, get a bit of a screen going and, and taking shooting opportunities when you have the chance. Um, so for us, that's the difference in, in generating some more offense. Um, and then again, Swift, they have three pretty even lines. Um, they forecheck really hard. They work really hard. Um, so it's just our ability to, to match that, that pace of play and that physicality. Um, and I think we've, you know, we found some things out about ourselves that we have the ability to play that, play that style of game and be successful. So, um, here's our chance to to prove that this weekend and um also just a little plug it's an important game for us this will be our uh, hockey fights cancer game awesome. um so 2 p.m start um there's going to be some i think they've termed as some old school fundraisers in terms of uh, a toonie stick and a puck toss and some of those old old school things yeah. you maybe used to see at your uh initiation and atom tournaments back in the day so um yeah looking forward to that and it's always a, a special event uh, raising money and funds for both the Canadian Cancer Society and the uh, Jim Pattison's Hospital Foundation, Children's Hospital Foundation. So, yeah, no yeah. doubt about it. I haven't heard that uh, term in such a long time, the Toonie Stick. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been a while since I heard that, but it's great <laughs> that uh, you guys are going to be doing some great fundraising for a very good cause going towards uh, raising funds for cancer. And uh, yeah, going to be another measuring stick for where the Saskatoon uh, Stars team stacks up against uh, one of the league's best teams uh, in the Swift Current Wildcats come this Saturday at home at 2 p.m. Uh, Robin Ulrich, head coach of the Saskatoon Stars, joining me here on this edition of Coffee with Graham. Robin, best of luck to uh, 
you and the team this upcoming weekend uh, in that game against Swift Current. Great to talk to you once again here on Coffee with Graham. Awesome. Thank you very much, Graham. I appreciate you having me on again. And Robin Ulrich, head coach of the Saskatoon Stars in the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League. And 2 p.m., Graham? No, it's 2 p.m. is when that game will be played on Saturday. Of course, uh, funds going to be raised for cancer. A great cause. Uh, well, money being raised towards a great cause. Uh, great job by the Saskatoon Stars for doing that as well to all the other teams in, uh, you know, throughout hockey and uh, just in sports in general, but uh, specifically, specifically hockey that are uh, raising funds for cancer this year with their uh, hockey fights, cancer nights uh, or games or whatever you want to call them. But yeah, um, of course, uh, Saskatoon taking on uh, one of the top teams in the league, the Swift Current Wildcats coming up on Saturday at home at 2 p.m. Uh, and Saskatoon's home arena. So after this final commercial break, uh, I'm going to be back here on Coffee with Graham to give you guys some final words on this edition of the show. Stick around for more of Coffee with Graham with me, Graham Forsythe after this commercial. All right, guys, make sure you watch that coverage out there. Speaking of coverage, you guys got supplementary insurance? Who is this guy? No one can cover me. You can be covered for any accident, anytime, anywhere, Canada and the USA. Learn more at supplementalinsurance.ca. Hi. Oh, brutal. Maybe I should get some of that coverage. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Uh, most recently joining the show was Robin Ulrich, head coach of the Saskatoon Stars. I want to thank Robin, along with uh, Carter Ambrose, team captain of the College Belleville Barracudas male hockey team, as well as my man, Cody Wall, for coming on the show. All three of those uh, guests coming on today's edition of Coffee with Graham, of course, Cody Wall coming on his segment Off the Wall with Cody, which we do air here on every one of our Tuesday morning episodes. Of course, uh, Thursday night is when Coffee with Graham will be airing next. Uh, that episode going at 8 p.m. Central Time. We're going to have a pretty big lineup for that episode. Uh, it's looking like it anyways. Uh, Seth Rock will be joining uh, Seth's inside scoop to preview and break down the teams that will be playing on the network this weekend uh, coming up on Thursday night. Uh, Going to have Tyler Vandeveld on the show, the leading scorer in the uh, Zone 4 High School Hockey League. Uh, last time I checked, he was leading uh, the league at least in points. Uh, also going to most likely have uh, two players on from the Assiniboine Community College Cougars in that episode as well. And also another edition of the Hawks Report will be coming to you guys in that episode as well. And uh, might have some other guests as well. Might have last constant number 20 of the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy Buffalo's U17 male prep team joining the show as well. So uh, stay tuned on our social media, on our Facebook, and on our Twitter uh, of course, our Facebook, ASTV Productions, our Twitter, Amateur Sports TV, as well as on our Instagram at ASTV Productions for who those guests will be. We will be most likely posting who the guests will be in that episode uh, on Thursday morning on all of those social media platforms. Of course, you can watch that next edition of Coffee with Graham at 8 p.m. Central Time on Thursday night on all of our platforms, on our Facebook, on our Twitter, and on our website as well. 
uh, at astvproductions.com, amateursports.tv. Um, and yeah, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'll leave some feedback about our new media player that we've been testing out on amateursports.tv. You guys can look under the tab uh, called TV shows on our website to check out uh, every edition of Coffee with Graham, uh, my other show, The Prospect Show, as well as Rise and Shine Manitoba, which is coming out tomorrow. This week's edition of the show, Manitoba Show. Uh, we'll be returning once again this week, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, catch that uh, anywhere you guys watch our episodes. But uh, if you guys want, check it out on our new media player on amateursports.tv. And yeah, uh, before I sign off, I want to not only give a special thanks to Cody Wall, Carter Ambrose, and um, Robin Aldrich for joining the show, but as well as to you, the viewer, for tuning in on this Tuesday morning, as well to our sponsors of today's edition of Coffee with Graham in Case Financial Group, Toby Hockey, Evolve Green, Supplemental Insurance, AETI, and our good friends over at Pilot Mound Hockey Academy. And yeah, uh, that's going to do it, folks. Until I see you on Thursday night here on Coffee with Graham, I've been your host, Graham Forsyth. Uh, until Thursday night, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Stay safe out there. Uh, like I say every time uh, since it is the winter months now, uh, diving into them as it is getting colder. There is snow on the ground here in Manitoba, uh, and it's pretty darn cold some days. So if you have a chance, uh, bundle up, stay inside if you have the opportunity to and uh, enjoy the warmth of your house. And, uh, you know, if you're at work, uh, whether you're at school or wherever you guys are, have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. I'll see you on Thursday night, everybody. Graham Forsyth, host of Coffee with Graham. Saluting to you guys now. Signing off now. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one.